We were promised a deal, as you have heard. We were promised a trade deal. We were promised all sorts of deals. And we were told that the trade deal in particular would be the easiest trade deal ever to be negotiated. I think it was said it was going to take a day. Two and a half years on, it amounts to a literally a few pages in a document which has no force at all, no binding force at all. It is the future framework. It is so vague that the government's own Treasury Department can't actually model it and work out exactly how much poorer our country will be if we were to secure a trade deal based upon it. So I won't be voting for this so-called deal for those reasons. Firstly, because we will be leaving the European Union without knowing what our future relationship will be. It's indeed that blindfolded Brexit that we were promised we wouldn't have, but if Mrs May's deal goes through, we absolutely will have. And the idea that the rows about Brexit will in any way finish if we leave at the end of March is frankly for the birds, because the rows and the arguments will continue. It doesn't give me any pleasure to say this, because it's, it's my own government, but the truth is, the government, the cabinet, still hasn't determined what sort of future trading relationship they want our country to be in with the European Union. I take the view that that is a disgrace and it is totally and utterly unacceptable. So the rows will continue. People say, that it is in some way undemocratic to take this matter back to the British people and for the British people to have a final say. I actually take the view that there, is far few, there are far fewer things that are more democratic. Now we know what Brexit looks like, two and a half years on, than actually going back to the people, whether Mrs May's deal gets through or not, whatever happens in Parliament, it must go back to the British people. And it must go back for these reasons. What I'm noticing, and I don't know whether you notice it on the stalls, is that it's the older Leave voters who are now really worried about our course and our direction. And I think what's happening is for a large number of older Leave voters, they are listening to their children and their grandchildren. And with respect, they realise that it's not about their future, but it's the future of our young people. And that should matter the most, because they are the people who will bear the consequences of Brexit. And of course, young people, two and a half years on, I believe they absolutely have a right. All those young people who couldn't vote in 2016 have an absolute right to determine their future, because as I say, they are the ones who will bear the brunt of Brexit. So we have to do it for all those good reasons. And ladies and gentlemen, we absolutely can do it. It's going to take a lot more hard work. There's going to be a big ask of you to keep on going, keep going out there, keep on making the case, and keep on writing and lobbying your Member of Parliament. doesn't matter what political party they are. You have a right to be heard, and they must listen to the voice of the people. As people now look at Brexit, understand what it means, and realise that this great country, in truth, has made a terrible mistake, and we have a right to a final say to change our minds and vote for a better future, a better deal, which is the deal we currently have with the European Union. We need to stay in the European Union.